Hello cave dwellers! I'm kneeling on the floor today and with the wide angle lens because we've got a lot to squeeze into the picture. Um, you may recognize some of these. They're all by Thrustmaster and it's what's known as a hot ass setup. Uh, hot ass standing for hands on throttle and stick. Uh, meaning as a pilot you would never ever have to take your hands off the stick because you have enough buttons, triggers, throttle controls and whatnot to, uh, to fly your plane without ever taking them off. Anyway, that's by the by. The reason I'm showing you these is because, well, they're all from 1996. We've got the Thrustmaster F22 Pro, the F16 throttle quadrant system, uh, and the rudder pedals here, the rudder control system. And at the time that these were released in around 96, this would have, the F22 would have set you back a cool 170 English pounds or about, oh, stick that on there, um, 220 American groundhogs or whatever you guys use. Uh, the throttle quadrant system would have set you back 155 English groats or um, what's that in US dollars? About 200 um, US uh, freedoms. And then the rudder control system would have set you back 116 uh, English sprouts or about, uh, what's that in US dollars, about 150, um, oh, about 150 Clintons, I think that is. So combine that total, convert it to US dollars, allow for inflation, and if you were buying this kit today, it would set you back 896 um, American Eagles. That is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I mean, the build quality of these things is, incredible the weight of this is ridiculous um so it's you know it's it's high it was high value kit at the time the equivalent today would be um still by thrustmaster and it would be their uh, their a10 setup which is the split throttle control system and stick but a very very similar setup um and that will set you back the best part of 300 pounds I don't know what that is in dollars, uh, three, 350 American dollars. Again, a lot of money, um, and it's the equivalent of this is today. So why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this because I bought this on Gumtree. Um, I don't know if you get Gumtree in the US. It's a little bit like Craigslist, um, a bit less Wild West, but um, very similar. And I got this entire setup, including postage, for 15 Queen's noses. 15 quid for that. Pretty impressive, I think you'll agree. Take these, <laughs> take these stickers off. So, what's the drawback? Why can't I jump on these and start playing DCS World, uh, MS Flight Simulator, or um, X Plane 11? Well, one simple reason it's this. How do you plug it in? This is known as a game port connector. It was discontinued because, uh, well, because Microsoft decided to discontinue it by not supporting it on any newer versions than Windows XP. So after XP, the game ports died, um, and with it, these devices, people had invested hundreds of pounds into these devices and they could no longer use them. Um, and that's why you can find them on the market today for such a low price. So the question is, can we use them? Can we find a way of using them? Can we turn this back into $800 worth of uh, flight sim equipment? Can we do it cheaply? Um, can we do it reliably and effectively? Um, it doesn't take a lot of research to find uh, the answer to that question. Um, a quick Google will show you all different methods of converting these things from taking them apart um, removing the controller boards and replacing them with, say, um, an Arduino or a, I think it's a Teensy unit, Teensy, Tweeny, Teensy, I think it's a Teensy unit, um, which involves soldering, it involves a little bit of um, uh, technical ability, not a great amount, I mean, I'm sure you can figure it out before long, but before we get to that stage, I want to show you this. It's called the USB Nest, um, also known as the USB Rockfire controller. It looks like this, and it's a very simple 
game port to USB converter. So, I know from the quick research I've done that we're not going to get every single part of this working with this simple £10, $13 device. But how far can we get with it? Can we make any of this usable? Can we combine any of this with a modern USB joystick, perhaps? There's only one way to find out. Let's plug it in. Um, we're going to test them individually, one at a time, see if we get anywhere with that. And if we do, then we will daisy chain them, um, see what combinations work. And uh, yeah, let's see if the £25 total that I've spent here can be used in any way whatsoever without having to start tearing them apart and converting them. The first item we're testing then is the Thrustmaster control, uh, rudder control system. Uh, it's, I've chosen this first because it's the simplest. If we look on the bottom, it's um, a single um, pot which is um, measuring a single axis. Pour them back on both sides. It's a bit squeaky, I think it could do with a bit of oil, but otherwise it's fine. It's in good condition. Um, so we've got the board plugged in. We've got the rock fire plugged into the USB port. User manual shows that we've got four settings on this switch. And the first setting is mode one, Thrustmaster flight control system, which is exactly what we're using. It also supports the CH Flight Stick Pro. Mode three is a two, four, uh, yeah, two to four axes, four button joystick. And mode four is a two axes, eight button joystick. So you can reduce the axes and increase the buttons. Um, to get it to work with whatever joystick you're using. So, uh, quite simply, rudder control system, does it work? Well, let's plug in for a start, that would help. Um, the, uh, the connector on this has a daisy chain connector so that you can plug it into the joystick uh, later, but we're gonna use this on its own. Plug it in. Uh, Windows has detected it as a two axis, four button joystick with viewfinder and rudder. Um, so all we're looking for here, oh yeah, that works. Z rotation, although there's not much on the scale of things, I think we need to calibrate that. We'll just run through the wizard. Um, so it wants us to leave it, everything centered. Okay, and then it wants us to calibrate my squeaky pedals. Hold them back all the way. That's it. There you go, that's much better. So, test one, the rudder control system. 100%, it works absolutely perfectly. So for me, that is probably worth the cost of uh, the 15 quid that I paid in total on its own. Um, we'll give it a quick test with a USB stick uh, that I've got a bit later. Uh, but let's move on to the next thing and see how that works. Next up then, a little bit more complex is the uh, the F22 stick. So in total here, you've got two hats, well three actually, um, uh, a button forward and back here, a trigger on the front, another trigger, another trigger. In total, you've got four, eight, 12, um, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, what's that, 19 buttons on the joystick. Um, and considering we've only got four buttons here, well, even if we take it to setting four on the Rockfire, which has a maximum of eight buttons, you can immediately tell that we're never gonna get all of the buttons to work. But does any of it work at all? Let's plug it in and see what happens. So we're looking for movement on the X and Y here. And I'm not getting anything. Um, okay. It could be because I haven't unplugged it since I put the, uh, since I unplugged the rudder. So let's just unplug it. Windows is complaining about that. Plug it back in. It's detected it again. Check properties now. Okay, yeah, we've got movement now. So, actually, it seems fairly smooth. Let's uh, let's calibrate the stick. It 
So we have to take it to all of the extremes to calibrate it. Again, a little bit squeaky, but that's nothing that can't be fixed. I'm sure even the best fighter pilots have to put up with a joystick, uh, <laughs> sticky joystick once in a while, a squeaky joystick even. Okay, hopefully that's calibrated now. Um, there's no Z rotation. Okay, so we're in the middle. Yeah, I'm actually impressed with that. I was expecting um, the pots to be a bit more spiky on it. With these older sticks, sometimes the um, the pots in there will um, will they'll jump about and you'll get a spiky input just because of age or because of the grease um, that's got in them from here. But that's a really nice, smooth stick. So the stick itself works. We know we're not going to get any fire buttons. Um, we're not going to get all of the buttons working, but do any of them work? Let's let's try the main trigger. Yeah, button one, button two. So we've got two buttons working. Try the side one, nothing. The hats. I was hoping the point of view hat might do something over here. I'm getting, no. I'm only getting button one and two working. So, um, because this is a used stick, I can't guarantee 100% that there isn't something that's broken in here, because that would involve um, that would involve plugging it into a Windows XP machine with a game port, which I haven't got here right now. I do have, however, uh, one of many game uh, <laughs> one of many sound cards here with a built-in game port. So, um, at some point, I will get around to building an XP machine, uh, and I can confirm. Um, if this is working but from what we can test today we can say that the joystick works some of the buttons work you're never going to get all of the buttons to work so you know what's that 30 40 percent success rate I guess on that um, hmm, I would have liked a bit more from that but um, let's move on and see if we get anywhere with the throttle Okay, so the throttle's plugged in now. Um, let's see if we get anything. Um, well, let's move it and see what happens. Okay, that's quite bizarre. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's detecting the throttle movements as the point of view hat. So that's really quite strange. Um, and let's try the buttons. Now, I'm not getting anything from any of the buttons. Um, and I'm not surprised that the the spinners aren't working. I thought maybe one might have worked, but it's not picking anything up as the Z rotation. Um, all the buttons down here, no. Okay, so in attempting to daisy chain these, I actually found something interesting, which was um, if I change the rock fire to setting three, which is designed to be um, a two four axes, four button controller, um, rather than the Thrustmaster flight control system setup, um, I get an extra setting here, which is slider. So I have Z rotation, which is what it picked up for the rudders, um, but I didn't have slider before. And in choosing setting three, my throttle quadrant system is now correctly working. It's detected as um, an analog um, slider as opposed to a point of view hat and the point of view hat no longer lists um, no longer exists here so I've sacrificed a point of view hat to gain a throttle and it works so actually on its own the throttle works the buttons still don't work but we've got a, a working throttle so that's a little bit more than we had before um, yeah, so with that in place, I'm going to leave it in setting three and now I'm going to daisy chain the joystick. It actually plugs into the front here of the uh, throttle quadrant system and then that goes off into the, the rock fire. So let's daisy chain that, let's see what happens. Okay, daisy chain, we've still got our throttle. Oh, we've, we've got a working stick as well. And the two, yeah, just the two, of course, fire buttons still work. So we've got two fire buttons, a working stick, and a working throttle. And we just have to ignore all of these other buttons here. So uh, not bad. So the last piece of the puzzle then is to 
daisy chain the rudder control system in and see if that works. There's our rudder control system. And where do we daisy chain this into? Oh, okay, we've got another link here. So we'll plug the um, joystick into the throttle, throttle into the rudder. That completes the daisy chain rudder into the rock fire. So we've still got our working throttle. We've still got our working joystick and the moment of truth, does the rudder work? Yes, it does. The squeaky rudder still works. So that's actually not bad, I think. Um, working throttle, working stick, working rudder, two buttons. So I think that's um, as successful as we're gonna be with this. Um, I'm pretty happy with that for 15 quid. Um, plus the converter, so £25. Uh, let's fire up some games and see how we get on with it. It would have been nice to have the hat working to, um, to be able to look around. Um, I'm using my squeaky pedals down here to uh, try and line up with the runway. Bring the speed down. <laughs> it's not the best landing in the world. I just want to get it onto the ground to show you that, yeah, in moving the... Uh, rudder I'm also steering with the wheels so that works nicely um, one last thing to try is the combo of the throttle and the rudders with uh, a modern joystick which I've got so let's give that a go so what I've plugged in now is this it's a USB um, CH fighter stick so this is a modern joystick so the final test really is um, to combine the throttle and the rudders with the modern flight stick because I know of course the hat and everything works as it should on the modern flight stick so um, the perfect kind of combination of value for money for me is to get the throttle to work and the rudders to work the pedals to work um, with a fully working stick that gives me all of the the buttons that I want to use um, so let's give it a go throttle's working the squeaky rudder pedals are working and then of course my modern stick work is working and uh, it's immediately noticeable on this um, just how much less effort it takes <laughs> because as great as this thing is it is a beast to move around it takes a lot of force um, whereas this is a much more uh, civilised uh, type of flight stick so um, I've got my just, just adjust the trim there we go. So um, throttle's working great. Uh, I can ignore all these buttons. It'd be nice to have them working, but I've got enough on here to do, you know, enough for at least a civilian flight sim like this. The uh, the rudder pedals working just great. So for my money, for fifteen pounds, and with the aid of the USB Nest, um, combined with. The joystick I had before, and all I had was a joystick before, I don't have any other throttle other than this little slidey throttle control here. Um, I've got myself a nice throttle, I've got myself some nice rudders. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, maybe in future uh, videos we'll explore taking this apart and some of those more advanced options to get all of the buttons working. But uh, if you happen to see a throttle rudder um, available for ten dollars, ten pound. Um, don't let it stop you from picking it up because with this converter, um, I think you still get quite a lot of value for money. Uh, it certainly enhances my gameplay experience. And um, yeah, go for it. These things will work for years to come. 
Um, I still don't forgive Microsoft for dropping the game port because that would have made life so much easier. But we are where we are. Right now, I am in my extra, flying above Heathrow Airport in London and loving it. See you later, cave dwellers.